Okay, so tonight's topic, getting ahead of myself, is what is tax sale investing and how can I get started? Uh, I'm uh, Steven Swenson, and, and before we get started, let me uh, tell you a little bit about uh, who we are and who I am. I attended my first tax sale in 1999. Uh, I was a brand new real estate agent. My broker invited me to come out and attend the sale. And that's the first opportunity I saw where people were buying property uh, through tax deed auctions at just a fraction of their value. And uh, at that time, the real estate market was it was doing pretty well. And so it was amazing to me to see property sell for uh, you know, 20, 30% of their value, especially in that type of a market. And so automatically, you know, I was completely intrigued and started learning about it. And in 2007, uh, we established Tax Cell Solutions. And uh, we were primarily established as a training company and also uh, authors for many of the Tax Cell programs uh, that these seminar companies uh, produced. And and uh, offered throughout the country. Uh, so we worked directly with the seminar companies for about 10 years. Uh, before that time, I was uh, a real estate coach, a tax sale investing coach, uh, and helped with uh, some several different companies before that, helped develop their tax sale investing program. Now, as far as students, we've taught over 20,000 students uh, nationwide. Um, usually what would happen is, is us as a company would uh, fulfill and do the training for the seminar companies. And we provide them with uh, our programs and authored many of their books. So as, as far as what you guys are going to uh, receive, as I mentioned, uh, all of you guys are gonna be able to get a bonus gift from tonight um, for attending the webinar. So if you're here on this webinar, uh, you're gonna get this bonus gift unless you already attended last week and then you already have it. Uh, but uh, you guys are going to get a guest pass to uh, secretsoftaxinginvesting.com for 30 days. And so that's going to give you the ability to, to uh, look at the auction calendar, see the upcoming list, uh, participate in the weekly trainings. Uh, you're going to have access to our over-the-counter uh, over the counter list database. Uh, you'll also have access to our online auction page. This is where we have all of the online auctions that are taking place. We have all of those different auctions put together in one place. So you can go to one pay, one web page and you can see all of the auctions, the tax lien auctions, the tax deed auctions. You know, there's probably about 15 or 20 different companies that offer ta some sort of tax sale investing auction. Uh, and so instead of you trying to go to all of these different companies, we put them all together. Uh, you can go there and click on and click on any of the auction links and, and be directed directly to the online auction website. So that's pretty neat. Uh, you're also going to have uh, access to our ebooks and training, the state guides. Uh, we have state profiles available on us. Uh, secretsoftaxleaninvesting.com and we'll have a uh, several page uh, profile on each one of those states. So they're going to say what type of state they are, uh, what type of investment strategy uh, they have uh, as far as tax liens, tax deeds, uh, are they a redemption deed state, what is their law, uh, how, you know, do they have over the counters, how, when is their auction, all that information is available in the state profiles. And so what we try to do guys is is help give you the resources to go out there and be successful. Uh, that's the reason we were able to train uh, over 20,000 students and still maintain and never even have to worry about our rating with the Better Business Bureau uh, because we fulfilled, uh, we provided our, our students with all of, all of the tools that were necessary. It's just really a matter of going out there and taking action. Uh, also, you're gonna have access to our investor profiles. So you guys are getting all of this as, a, as being a member of Secrets of Tax Lean Investing uh, with this 30-day uh, guest pass. In addition to that, you're going to have access to our secondary market tax liens. And I'm going to get into that later on in the webinar, uh, but that's an additional bonus to you is being a member of the website. So why tax liens and deeds? Why are you on the phone call tonight? Uh, maybe you've already invested in some tax liens uh, or attended a tax deed auction. Maybe you've just, this is just something you've been thinking about started. Uh, but this is definitely the first step in in becoming successful in tax liens and deeds. Uh, you know, we've helped a lot of investors, and and I want to be able to help you go out there and be successful too. Uh, over the last six months, uh, we've kind of taken a, a break from training to focus on. Uh, personal investments and so uh, you know we haven't done a lot of trainings over the last six months and really the reason uh, we decided to start 
doing trainings again is because how much we love to, you know, we love doing it. Uh, there's nothing that uh, brings more joy to me to be able to see an investor go out there and make some good money. If they can go out there and pick up a property and I get that success story, hey, Steve, check out this tax deed I purchased, um, you know, I'm, I'm a step two. You know, that makes me feel great. If an investor goes out there and is earning a great interest rate on their money, you know, they had it in the bank earning half a percent, and now they're earning 12% or 16% or 18% on their money. Uh, you know, I feel good about that because I know they're making a better investment. Um, that's what that's the reason I got excited, and, you know, back in 1999 about tax lien investing and haven't quit talking about it since then. Uh, you know, I probably drive people nuts talking about it because I see, you know, I even have family uh, that had uh, so much money in the stock market. And over the last, you know, after 9-11 and between that time, they were invested in the very safest stocks and lost half of their money, half of their retirement. Boom, gone. If they would have been investing in tax and certificates, they'd be earning 18 percent on their money. They would be earning money each year on it. And now finally, you know, I've been able to 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 bring some of my family members and start investing in tax lien certificates and tax deeds uh, because there's just a great opportunity. That's the reason you're on the line this evening and, and let's go ahead and get started talking about it. So why tax liens and deeds? Well, first of all, tax liens are one of the safest investments available today. Uh, they're one of the highest yielding investment strategies. Uh, you can compare a tax and certificate to a stock, a CD, a mutual fund. Uh, you know, generally they're going to be as high, if not higher, than many of those investments, and they're also going to be guaranteed. Tax liens can earn 12, 16, 18 percent, even 25 percent per year. Now, as far as tax deed investing, uh, tax deeds can be purchased and sold quickly for lump sums of some returns. They can all be, also be rented or leased for monthly residual income. So, with tax deed investing, you're really looking at that like a real estate investor. Uh, you know, with tax liens, you look at it as an interest rate return with the chance to get a property. Mostly, you're going to be earning an interest rate return. With tax deed investing, you're acquiring the property. It's just a different form of foreclosure. So, uh, you know, it's a foreclosure because of taxes versus a foreclosure because of mortgage. Uh, and usually, tax deeds are going to be sold for a lot less. Uh, you know, because when you're looking at a mortgage foreclosure, uh, they may have a mortgage that's worth more than the property. So they can't take that big of a hit. With tax deeds, the only thing the county can charge, uh, you know, as far as that beginning bid amount, is how much is delinquent in taxes. So instead of starting at 95%, you're starting at 5, 10%, uh, 15%. Uh, and so there's just a, there's a way, there's, you know, a, a lot larger room for profit. And, you know, that's what really what the reason you're on the call and you're interested in tax liens and deeds is because you're looking to make a profit. Uh, and that doesn't that pro doesn't matter if that profit's 18% or 16% on your money, or if it's going out there and acquiring property. Either way, I think it's the best of both worlds. That's the reason you know I that's the reason I'm so excited to talk about it. Uh, now, redemption deeds they offer property rights with a higher interest rate with a high interest rate return. So, redemption deeds are a tax deed with a redemption period, and we're going to get into it in more detail here in a little bit. Okay, now these are a couple of investments that uh, we made last month. I wanted to show you guys a couple of recent uh, deals that we were able to do. These are two Florida tax deed properties. Now the first property is a single family home, uh, three bedroom, two bath. It's valued about 52 grand. Now we won this in the auction for about 10,100. Now, with this particular property, uh, we're going to do it as a rental. We're going to do a rent, and so we're going to rent it out at $900 a month. So if you're looking at that $900 a month and looking at a $10,000 bid, well, you know, within a year's period of time, this property will pay for itself. Uh, now, I mean, you know, you think about that. Uh, you know, a property is able to pay for itself within a year, and then from there on, you have a cash-flowing property. Uh, there, you know, there's not a lot better than that. Uh, Here's another Florida tax deed, uh, another single family home, three bedroom, one bath. It's worth about $65,000. Uh, this one we paid a little bit more for. We paid $20,700. Uh, we're going to sell it for $60,000, so it's going to have a $36,000 profit. Uh, and so these are, these are two examples uh, that you know, we were able to do within the last 60 days. Uh, and so there is opportunity out there. Uh, you, know, you just want to make sure you're making a good investment. Uh, 
you know that's really that's really the key is just making sure that you're picking up a good property uh, you know and the property may sell from anywhere between 10 to 30 percent now with tax and certificates you're going to have it's going to be a little bit different strategy there is strategies to acquire property through tax and certificates and it's really tax liens that are past their redemption period uh, and that's something that you can do through the secondary market and so we're going to talk about that a little bit later now why tax liens and deeds oh we went through that already so what is a tax lien well first of all a tax lien by definition is a claim against an asset uh, in this case real property filed by a government taxing authority against a delinquent taxpayer and really guys there's three types of tax sales there's tax liens there's tax deeds and there's also redemption deeds So let's get into the property tax tax basics. Now, as far as property taxes, they're also called ad valorem taxes in many counties. Uh, the local governments, they operate independent of the federal government. So the property taxes represent the single biggest form of revenue for the counties. Uh, this is going to go to pay for the education, uh, the police. Now, the actual laws that govern the enforcement of property taxes are going to be written on a state level. So the state light writes the laws, and then the county follows those state guidelines to conduct the auctions. Now, the actual t property tax rate, it's going to be based on a combination of property value and the county's estimated budget for the year. Uh, and so that's when we talk about the assessed value, that's how they come up with the property tax rate uh, and come up with that assessed value is by a combination of the property value within the, within the county and then the county's estimated budget. And so we're going to go through that in a little bit later. Now here's the property tax cycle. We can see the property owner down here, uh, the county government. Now the property owner is going to go ahead and pay property taxes to the county government. The county government uses that money to provide local services like we talked about, the police, school, education. Um, now as far as that property tax rate, uh, here's an example to kind of give you an idea. Now this it it, this $1 million is the estimated budget for the county services per year. Uh, now this is, of course, we're just using this for numbers sake. Uh, usually counties are going to have a larger budget. Uh, but at $1 million, that would be the county's budget. Now that county has $100 million worth of real estate. So the county assessed value for the real estate within that area is $100 million. And so at that with the 1 million versus 100, that's going to give us a property tax rate of 1%. So a home valued at 100,000 would have a $1,000 tax bill. Uh, and so if this property tax rate was 2%, then that would be a $2,000 tax bill. And so it really just, you know, is going to be based on the property tax rate within that area. And that's the reason some areas have a higher, you know, have a higher tax liens than other areas, uh, even though the real estate may be valued about the same. Uh, it just depends on how big that county budget is, and the bigger the county budget, the higher the property taxes. So what happens if the property owner doesn't pay their annual property taxes? Well, the county relies on the property tax revenue to function. So the property taxes need to be enforced. Uh, if they weren't enforced, people wouldn't pay them. And so that really what that's really what brings us into the property tax enforcement systems. And there's three systems uh, that are used within the United States. There's the tax lien system, there's the tax deed system, and there's the redemption deed system. Now, as far as tax lien certificates, tax liens are an enforcement method used by the county for the in collection, uh, used by the county government for the collection of property taxes. So tax liens are going to be offered to investors that are willing to pay off the delinquent tax liens uh, and usually you're going to purchase tax liens at a live auction or, or over the counter or in the last couple of years there's the secondary market. So tax liens pay investors a rate of return and they also give property owners a redemption period to pay the taxes. Now if the tax lien redeems the investor will be paid back the principal plus the interest rate return. So if you invest you know thousand dollars at 18 uh, percent you're going to make back $180. You can invest $10,000, you're going to make back $1,800 if that tax lien went for a year. Now tax liens have foreclosure rights. This is, you know, this is one of the 
the greatest thing about tax liens is they have that foreclosure right. Uh, if a tax lien is not paid back within the redemption period, then the lien holder can foreclose and become the property owner. So with tax lien certificates, we're really looking at it um, through through the idea of of earning an interest rate return. Uh, now, unless you're purchasing foreclosure ready tax liens, most tax liens are going to pay off. About 95% of your tax lien certificates will pay off during that time frame. But of course, there is properties that are acquired through through tax lien certificates, and and tax deed states also sell property. So if a lien in tax lien states, the county will issue a tax lien against the property. We can see the county government here uh, issuing this tax lien. Now, this is going to prevent the sale of the property. It can also lead to the property foreclosure, and it's also going to lead to delinquent taxes and more penalties. So the county is going to hold the tax sale where these tax liens are going to be sold to public investors like you and me. We can see this tax lien certificate here uh, on the property earning an 18% interest rate with a two-year redemption period. It's going to be issued by the county. We're going to have the chance to purchase those tax liens, and we're going to start earning that interest rate on our money. Now, two things are going to happen at the, on the day of the sale. First of all, the lien is going to be accru start accruing interest. So that 18% or 16% or 12% is going to start earning. Also, the redemption period is going to begin at that time as well. So those are the two things that are going to happen on the day of sale. So as we're looking uh, in, in, in tax liens that happened a couple of years ago in over-the-counter or secondary market, we're going to look to see when that auction initially took place. That's when the, uh, the lien's going to start accruing interest. Now, after you purchase the tax lien, really two scenarios. First of all, the property owner is going to pay the county. So when the property owner pays the county, the tax lien certificate is re removed. Now, if the property owner doesn't pay the county, that's where us as lien holders have the foreclosure right. We can exercise that right and foreclose on the property. So in scenario one, if the property owner doesn't pay, uh, if the, excuse me, if the property owner does pay, then the county government is going to get a going to cut a check to us as the investor investor with our uh, investment plus the, in, the high interest rate return. In the scenario two, if they don't pay, then of course we're going to use that lien to foreclose on the property and become the property's owner. Now let's go ahead and get into the tax deeds. Uh, tax deed states have the same objective as tax lien states, and that's to collect delinquent property taxes. But what tax deed states do is they don't sell tax liens on an annual basis. So what tax deed states do is they wait until the redemption period is passed, and then the county will begin the foreclosure process. So the tax liens are going to uh, is are going to be foreclosed on by the individual counties. Now after the county forecloses on the property, they're going to create what's either called a tax deed or sometimes it's called a quick claim deed. Then the county is going to offer the property deed uh, for sale at usually a public auction. Now there is a couple of other types, sealed bid, uh, but usually it's going to be some type of public auction either at the county courthouse or county approved building or many auctions are, are are also taking place online. Now the winning bidder will be awarded the property and so with tax deed you're actually acquiring the property, it's property ownership. So states that use tax deeds give the counties the power to foreclose on the delinquent property after the redemption period expires. Uh, so they're going to have a redemption period as, as well. They're going to have a period that they, uh, that they have uh, where they'll allow the property taxes to be delinquent. So they'll say, okay, we'll give the property owner four years. We're going to keep sending out letters, letting them know. If they don't pay it over those four years, then we're going to foreclose it and we're going to sell it at the auction. So it's a pretty easy concept when you just think about it like that. And as far as tax and certificates, you're just earning that lien against the property. Uh, with it, this, you know, as far as tax lien investing, it's really a win-win scenario. Uh, the the county is going to win because uh, they're able to get the money they need to function. Uh, the investor is going to win because uh, they're earning an interest rate return, and the property owner is going to win because they're going to give extra time to pay their property taxes before they lose their property. Uh, with tax deed states, the county takes that right, they foreclose on the property, they offered it up at the auction.
So as far as getting started with tax deeds and some and some tips and ideas, the opening bid amount is usually going to reflect about five to ten percent of five to ten percent of the property's value. The opening there we go. Let me get back. Uh, the opening bid amount usually won't be the purchase price for the tax deed sold at auction. Uh, many times, you know, you may bid up on those properties that I showed you. Uh, you know, one of them started at, at fifteen thousand. One of them started at five thousand. So we bid it up the property. Uh, that's usually how it's going to take place. There may be properties that that don't bid up and that or that don't have bids. Uh, and they may be good properties. It's just about looking a little bit more into them. But most tax deeds are, going, or especially the best tax deeds, are going to bid up somewhat in price. Now the bidding is going to start at that minimum amount, and then it's going to bid up in price until the, the until the final bid is established. Also, tax deeds sell can sell from the opening bid up to the market value, uh, but usually. Usually, they're going to sell anywhere between 20% uh, to 50% of the property's value. A real nice property and a real high competition may sell up, you know, that 50% mark, but usually that's where you're going to see the, the properties. And so it gives investors a, a lot larger margin uh, to uh, make profit on these properties because, uh, you know, when you're picking a property for 25% of its value, there's 75% profit that can be made. Uh, and and so there's just a lot of options. It's you know it's really one of the the best ways to acquire real estate for the cheapest. Uh, I have not found a, a cheaper way to get property. Now uh, tax deeds property can be purchased all over the county. Uh, some counties and some states have over the counter tax deeds available. Okay, now let's go ahead and quickly go over the last uh, enforcement system, and that's the redemption deed system. Uh, these are going to be states like Texas, states like Georgia, uh, and redemption deeds are similar to tax liens and tax deeds. Redemption deeds are a hybrid of both. So redemption deeds are tax deeds with a redemption period. Uh, now redemption deeds have redemption periods that range from six months to two years. Also, in addition to that, redemption deeds pay excellent returns. Uh, you know, uh, Georgia is 20%, uh, Texas is 25%. Also, states like Texas, they have ownership rights extended to the deed holder, uh, to the investor during the redemption period. And so essentially what the redemption deed states do is they issue the deed in your name. They're just not going to uh, record the deed until after the redemption period is all over. Now, what redemption deeds differ from tax and certificates is first you're getting that deed. Uh, some states will give you, uh, uh, you know, ownership rights of, so you can, you know, live in the property. You just don't want to put a lot of money into it in case the property owner redeems. Uh, but what separates them is, is it's a penalty versus an interest rate return in most redemption deed states. So instead of being 18% broken up over a year, going out to a percent and a half per month, uh, like a tax lien certificate in, in you know, Florida or, or you know, 16% in Arizona, uh, redemption deeds offer that full payout regardless of the, when the redemption deed redeems. So in Georgia, uh, it's a, it's a one-year uh, redemption period. They pay out a 20% 20, 20 penalty. So if you were to purchase one of these redemption deeds, uh, then if it redeemed after one year, you would make 20%. If it redeemed after you know, one week, you would make 20%. So if the property owner redeems early, you can you know, really uh, double, triple, quadruple that uh, that interest rate return. If not, after the year period, then you're going to become the property owner. Uh, so it's really just a win-win scenario with redemption deeds, you know, but the thing about redemption deeds is you usually need to be there in person. Um, they're a great investment because they offer a good return with a higher chance of getting the property. Um, so let's talk about selecting your investment strategy. Really the first step in getting started is to determine what invest your investment strategy is going to be. So here we have uh, kind of a graph of how this is done. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to select a strategy. Uh, there's lots of different strategies out there. Uh, from there, you're going to locate a state and a county. From there, you're going to obtain a tax sale list. Um, 
and as far as this, you know, there's really a pattern to be able to do this. As far as selecting a strategy, because you're on the call tonight, you're going to have access to the investor profiles. You can go through the investor profiles, and it's going to help you determine what strategy you'd like to get started with. In fact, we need to add one more profile to that, and that's the secondary market profile or the secondary market investor. And so that's the profile I'm coming up with, and we're going to add that to the website. Um, once you've located, once you've determined your investor profile, then you can locate uh, a list or locate properties. Uh, so obtain a tax sale list. You can get those off of the secret website. You can get them from the counties directly, from the county websites. Uh, from there, you're going to narrow your selection, narrow that list down. Uh, do the due diligence and make the investment. And so we're going to go through and talk about some of these. We're not going to get to the to the last two uh, just because we don't have the time, but we're going to get into that first part uh, that you're, as you're going to go through it. So the first thing to think about is, are you going to be investing for yield or investing for property ownership? Uh, investing for yield, you're looking to generate the highest interest rates possible. Uh, it's a guaranteed investment. It has high security. Uh, it's a way to build retirement. In fact, uh, we have a lot of investors uh, that have 401k accounts. Uh, and they and they have an old 401k they're not using. They want to turn that over to a self-directed IRA. You know, if you're making three, four percent on your money in your IRA account and you're seeing that return come in, well, why not put that in tax and certificates where you have a chance to get the property, plus you're going to earn a higher interest rate return. Uh, and so a lot of investors are, 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 are taking their old accounts and turning them into self-directed accounts and using it to purchase tax and certificates. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great way to build your retirement. Uh, less time to dedicate, uh, less burden, less hassle. Uh, you know, with tax and certificates, you know, you're not going to be acquiring the property uh, in most scenarios. Uh, and so you're just going to be earning an interest rate return. You don't have to put a lot of time and effort into it after you purchase that tax. Then you just wait until the property owner pays. You go ahead and get, make your interest rate, invest in another tax lien. Or if they don't, then you can foreclose on the property. Uh, and at that point, if you purchase good tax liens, it's not such a great property. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's like hitting the lottery in a lot of ways. Uh, investing for ownership, you're looking to replace your income. You're looking to generate lump sums. Uh, it's going to take more time, more money. Uh, may require travel. It's going to cause, it's going to be more work. Uh, but you can earn those large lump sums. You know, you could turn around and sell a property and make 30 grand or 50 grand or 100 grand or 200 grand. Uh, you know, the, the really the sky's the limit. There's big properties uh, all over the country that sell at tax deed auctions. So the first thing you're going to do is we go down as we go down that. Uh, I don't keep trying to think of the name of it, just that uh, graph in a way uh, as we select a strategy. And this is where we're going to do this with the investor profiles. And so we have uh, different profiles available on the website. You're going to see them in the profile section. That's where we have the state profiles and the investor profiles. And you can go through and read about the different profile types. Uh, you know, a high yield tax lien investor. Uh, there's seven different profile types, and they're going to give you a good idea of what you can do with that, with that um, profile the different states you're able to invest in. Uh, so each one of these profiles are going to have the list of the states where you can use that profile. So as a high yield tax lien investor, here are the states you can look for earning high interest rate returns with tax liens. Uh, and so that's going to help you narrow down. Suddenly you go from, uh, you know, 50 states to, to 20 states or to 10 states, and that helps narrow down so you're not spending so many time, so much time looking at areas that you may not even want to invest into. It helps narrow that down. So once you've selected a strategy, then you're going to locate a state and county. You're going to do that uh, through going through those state profiles, looking at a couple of states you're interested in. Maybe they have auctions coming up. Maybe they have over-the-counter. Uh, from there, you're going to obtain a tax sell list. Oh. First, we're going to go through the state profiles real quick. Uh, so each state is going to have uh, one of these state profiles. It explains uh, the bidding types, the rate of return, the redemption period, assignment purchasing, auction dates. It even has the law written down plus the profile. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to really give you a good understanding of each one of those states as you go through and, and read those profiles. 
So essentially there's 50 states and there's 3,300 counties and municipalities. So that's a, that's a lot to begin with. That's a, the reason a lot of investors get overwhelmed. Is there, my goodness, there's 50 states. How am I ever going to find where I want to invest? And that's what we do. We try to funnel you down uh, this process, this training process and decision-making process to determine your investor profile. That's going to narrow down 50 states to 10 states, you know, 600 counties. Uh, from there, as you review the state guides, and auctions coming up, just depending on what your investor, uh, what your strategy is, you're going to pick one or two states. That's going to narrow it down to 10, 20 counties. Uh, and from there, you can pick one or two counties to get started with. And so, you know, that's really the process that you're going to go through is you're going to review the investor profiles. Uh, and because you're on the, the line, you're going to have access to them on the website. Uh, you're going to review the state guides, pick a state to get started with, start reviewing some of those counties, look at some of the lists that are available, uh, see if they have auctions coming up, and then choose a county and a state to get started with. So there's really a different, couple different types of auction list. First of all, there's pre-auction list. Uh, these are the list before the auction takes place. Uh, and so these are, you know, obviously upcoming auctions. There's also the post-auction list. These are what we call over-the-counter uh, assignment purchasing list, secondary market list. Uh, these are uh, tax lien investments that are available after the auction has taken place where you can go and purchase them over the counter, either over the counter through the county, over the counter through a secondary market, uh, and you know just really whatever, whatever type it is, it's going to be those over the counter properties. And now each list is going to be classified according to the enforcement system is, that it's used. So a tax lien list, a tax deed list, a redemption deed list, uh, you know, those are going to be classified, those different investment types. The list will be classified that way. So we're going to get into just a little bit of, of the due diligence and nearing your selection, but that's really something that we're going to go over next week uh, and also uh, tomorrow evening as well. We have another webinar. We have two webinars this week uh, because we have the website training webinar as well. And so uh, you guys will have access to that. If you'd like to attend that webinar, uh, you can attend that webinar as well as well where we're going to get into uh, narrowing down the selection, due diligence, and then making the investment. But let's go over a few points this evening. First of all, once a tax sale list has been obtained, the next step is going to be to identify potential investments. Now this can be done most in most cases online. Uh, county websites have made such a difference in tax lien and deed investing. I mean, even when I first got started, uh, you know, you couldn't find over-the-counter lists available online. There was maybe one or two counties. And, uh, you know, from from then to now, so much has changed. Almost every county has county records available. Most of the counties have parcel search tools where you can review the county records online. Uh, it makes, you know, there's just so many tools available to us that weren't available to us 10 or 15 years ago. And that's the reason really the internet has revolutionized tax lien and deed investing. Most times, uh, you know, you, the, the tax lien auction or the tax sale auction was just the local people. Uh, if it was a big area, then you may have a few out of the, you know out of state investors, big pocket investors that are looking to spend millions of dollars. Otherwise, uh, you know it's mostly local. Now with the internet, we can do auctions online. We can do research online. It makes tax lien and deed investing a lot easier for us as investors. Now, for tax liens, the objective is to make sure the property has value. When I'm looking at a tax lien certificate, I'm not interested in geography. I'm not interested in, uh, you know, really even what type of property it is. It could be a residential lot. It could be a residential property. It could be a commercial lot. It could be a commercial property. It could be a large tract of land. Uh, it, you know, it, really what I'm looking for is property value. Uh, you know, because an acre that's out in the middle of Arizona that's nothing but rattlesnakes and sagebrush that's only worth $500 uh, versus a one-acre lot in Connecticut that's, uh, you know, a commercial lot that's worth $80,000. There's a big difference between those two same one-acre lots. And so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for value. 
Uh, and as far as tax and certificates, if I see that value, then I'm going to invest in the tax lien. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be worry about doing huge amounts of due diligence on the property because I can see the value of the property, get a look at the property, and I can make a, a good investment. 95% of the time, I'm just going to make back my interest rate return. Now, the primary objective for tax deeds is to determine the estimated property's value. That's what's most important to us as tax deed investors. And one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to kid yourself. You want to, you know, figure out what you could sell it for if you had to. You know, I'm always going to take the lowest comparables I can find as far as what my property, that property's worth. I want to be on the low side. You know, I don't want to overinflate the price of my mind because I'm the investor. You're the investor. Uh, and so, you know, be honest as you go through and evaluate the property. That's going to help you determine uh, that 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 opening bid. Uh, that's the same thing as looking at tax lien investing. You know, as far as foreclosing and acquire property through tax liens, the, you know, you're usually going to foreclose on tax liens that have more than one year's worth of property taxes uh, because it's going to be harder for a property owner to pay off, uh, you know, uh, when you start the foreclosure process, that makes all of those property taxes due. So, you know, the, the property owner may have not paid for the last four years, and now you're going to foreclose. They have to pay all four years of them. So suddenly, uh, you know, something that may be a, a six or $7,000 amount suddenly, you know, becomes a, a twenty or thirty or $40,000 amount, and the property owner is going to have a lot harder time paying off that on a $200,000 home, for example, than if it was, you know, $6,000. Uh, and so with tax and certificates, there's ways to acquire property as well. Uh, you just want to look and see how much is that that lien value versus the property value. Uh, and, and so this is what you're going to think of as you go through and look at different investments. Uh, for tax deeds, you know, you want to look at it. What is what are you willing to pay for it? Am I willing to pay 50% for the property? Uh, then it, and can I make profit on it? If you can make profit, then it's a good investment. You can turn around and sell the property quickly. You could do a little work on it, sell the property for a higher value. Uh, there's just a real lot of options. And with tax and certificates, if you don't, then you're going to make that good interest rate return. So this is a website that I like to use for uh, finding county websites. It's called NACO.org. Now, uh, I'm going to go through, we're going to go through it online uh, in just a minute, and so we won't go through all the details, but what the NACO does is it allows you to research county websites. It has all of the county websites there, and so as you go through, you can go to click on Florida and look at all the different counties. Click on the county and review the county information. Now, as far as, and the reason I bring up NACO is because as far as, as tax lien and deed investing, uh, one of your greatest tools, one of the most important things you need to learn how to do is to navigate county websites. Uh, the, can, the key to conducting due diligence is the ability to navigate these websites. Uh, the county websites are going to contain the information we need. They're going to have the tax information. They're going to have the property data. They're going to have maps. Uh, they may have registration. They're going to have the tax sell list, the auction information. They're going to have all the information we need as investors, or at least a lot of the information, to figure out a property, to review the property records, to see when the property sold. Uh, and so really your ability to go through and, and research these county websites is going to be, you know, one of your greatest tools and one of the things that you're going to need to learn to be a, to be a great tax lien and deed investor. Uh, now, these county websites, they really can be one of our greatest tools. Uh, the key to conducting due diligence is the ability to navigate them. So as far as county websites, there's different departments that we're going to look for. Uh, now the uh, the state profiles will go through and talk about uh, some of the different uh, county departments that you'll need to contact. But usually there's two different two different uh, county departments. Now the first county department is going to be the assessor, uh, the property appraiser. That's where we're going to go to figure out how much is a property worth, uh, what's the assessed value. Uh, you know, sometimes they may have pictures of the property. It's where you're going to get all of that property record information. Uh, also, uh, the treasurer, tax collector, 
Uh, there are many times going to be the person that handles the collection of the property taxes. And usually the person that handles the collection of the property taxes is going to be the person that's in charge of uh, conducting the tax sale. If they're not at least the person that's in charge of conducting the tax sale, they're going to know who does. Uh, and so, you know, the tax collector is another department that you're going to look for. So as far as the treasurer, they may be some called sometimes by different names. Uh, they can be called the treasurer, the tax collector, the finance department. It's really the person that handles the property taxes. Uh, many times they're going to have the auction calendar, I mean, excuse me, the auction, the upcoming auction information, the tax sale list, over the counter information. They're also going to have the past property tax record. Uh, and so that's something you can look at in looking at in, in purchasing tax lien. Say you're purchasing an over-the-counter tax lien or a secondary market lien. Uh, you know you're going to want to see what those past tax records tax records are in case you want to foreclose on the property. Uh, you're going to need to pay those to be able to foreclose so that you become the only lien holder. Uh, and then that gives you the foreclosure right. Uh, somebody could do that before you if they have an earlier lien and they can foreclose and they're going to pay off your lien. Uh, and that's where you're going to make your money back if another property owner forecloses because they want to try to acquire the property. Uh, it just depends on the tax and certificate. As far as the appraiser, uh, they conduct a pr property evaluation on every piece of real estate within the county. So they keep and update all of the real estate records. They're gonna, we're going to use their parcel search tool to research property records. We can research them by the address. We can research them by uh, the owner. Usually the easiest way to research properties by the parcel number. So we go to that parcel search tool. We type in the parcel number. We can pull up those property records. And property records will, will vary from county to county, but they're usually going to have a lot of good information. They're going to include the lot size. They may have a, a map, overhead map. Uh, they may have a mapping system. Uh, they're going to have the improvements, the zoning, the property values, uh, and sometimes photos. So there's going to be a lot of good information. That's the first thing I check when I'm looking at a property is I'm going to check the, pr the property record, see what the, the county says about the property and has about the property. So the parcel search tool, we can search by different criteria. Uh, we can search by the address, the owner, the legal description. Um, once you found the parcel search tool, uh, then you can click on the enter, uh, click the enter button and it's going to go ahead and pull up the property records. Another good tool of the property records are the maps. You're always going to want to check out the maps. That's going to give you the overhead version. You're going to be able to see lot lines, uh, and uh, some maps are very interactive. So uh, as you go through and get serious about a property, then you're going to want to check all of these different options out. You want to find all the information you can that's available on the county records. So as evaluating property, uh, the property assessment of value ensures the investment security. And so different investments are going to re require varying degrees of research. Uh, the more money you invest, the greater you're going to research. Uh, high yield tax and investing requires that the property ha just has adequate value. Uh, the lien has a good bid to bid, uh, good uh, lien to, to to value ratio as well. Uh, you know, if 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 by Paying, off, paying the tax and certificate, if you have a good chance of getting the property, if not earning your interest rate return, then it's a good investment. Uh, because either way, you're going to get the property or you're going to earn your interest rate return. Uh, now, as far as property acquisition investor or a tax deed investor, you know, you're going to need to know more specific information about the property. Now, here are some of the things that we're going to be going over uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, reading tax sale list, uh, determining your qualifying factors, uh, narrowing down your selection, uh, pulling up county records and property records, researching the risk, uh, using Zillow and Google Earth, uh, determining the property value, uh, defining your potential investments, uh, re refining your qualifying factors, uh, determining your maximum bid, uh, bidding at the auction. Uh, and so th these are some of the things that we're going to be going over the next couple of weeks and going through and, and, uh, and talking about. So what is over-the-counter investing? It's a question I get a lot. Uh, over-the-counter investing is purchasing tax liens and deeds uh, after the auction has taken place. And so there's, you know, there's lots of different over-the-counter uh, 
type list. There's tax lien list. There's tax deed list. There's redemption deed over the counter list. And there's the secondary market tax lien list. And so these are all tax liens that you can purchase uh, without going to the auction, uh, without bidding down that interest rate. Uh, you're just paying whatever that interest rate is. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and click off this and we're going to go online for a few minutes. So let's go ahead and go online. Okay. So the first thing we're going to go to is uh, to Secrets of Tax Lien Investing. Here's the website. And uh, some of you probably already have access. If not, uh, the, the rest of you this evening will receive access. And you're going to have access to uh, these different options right here. Right? You already have access to the free offers, but you're going to have access to the auction calendar. Uh, here's the auction calendar with different auctions that are coming up. Uh, we're going to be adding about uh, 60 new lists uh, over the next uh, two or three days. Uh, and so there's going to be a lot more auctions coming up. Uh, and you can see all the auctions. You can go ahead and click on the link uh, to either be directed to the auction page, if it's an online auction, the auction website, or if it's the list, you'll be, be uh, directed to download the tax sale list. Uh, and so these are auctions that you have the ability to see that are coming up. Uh, the training section is going to have uh, links to be able to register for the webinar. So you can see here's the webinar this evening. Uh, the webinar on the 10th. We also have a Saturday boot camp that's going to be happening on the 20th, uh, I believe. Uh, you also have the Tax Sale News Center. You can click on the link here. Uh, here are some of the May articles that have come out uh, about tax lien investing. We're going to be adding the June as well. Uh, and you can click on any of these links and review any of these uh, articles that have, you know, this is the news that's happening in tax lien and deed investing. Uh, the blog we're going to be updating. Uh, with uh, different questions uh, that you guys have, different things that we talk about. Uh, so feel free to always check out the blog. Uh, there's going to be good information there. Uh, you're also going to have access to the forms and scripts. Uh, these are different phone uh, scripts that you can use. Uh, also uh, email form scripts, letter form scripts, and then uh, also uh, phone scripts. Uh, if you want to call and talk to a county official, here's some you know, guideline as far as what you're going to say. Uh, makes it a little bit easier in calling and speaking with them sometimes if it's their first time. And then, of course, email forms and uh, letter forms as well. Uh, the ebooks, you can see we have the Secrets ebook, 30 day challenge, the new foreclosure opportunity. Uh, we have our home study course that we're going to try to put on here uh, as far as an online version that you can go through and read online. Uh, and so that's something that I'm working on. Uh, then you also, of course, have the, the YouTube channels with the different videos that we'll be posting, put new videos on. This here is the online auction tab. This is going to give you uh, the links to all of the online auctions that are coming up. So if we click on Tax Lien Online Auction, uh, we're going to have the links to all of the auctions that are that are taking place. And you can go through and see what auctions are coming up. You can go ahead and click on any of these auctions and uh, be directed to the auction website. Tax deed as well. You can see here some of the online auctions coming up. You know, we got on uh, right today, uh, San Luis Obispo. Go ahead and click on that and we can be directed to the auction page. We see that, you know, they're offering up uh, 104 tax defaulted properties and 83 timeshares. Uh, and so you, we can go down here to the bottom of the list and we can see some of these uh, properties that, that recently sold. If we ever go ahead and click on it, we can see that this actually sold for 37000 
we have the location there and we can open up another tab and uh, go to Google Maps Let's see if we can pull up any of this property. Let's try another one. So this looks like well, one of those timeshares. So this actually auction has already taken place. Uh, and we can go through and see what any of these properties sold for. And I looked up one earlier. I just can't find which one it was. Oh, here it was. So I was just looking at that. I looked at this property right here. If we click on uh, Google Earth and zoom in, you know, it really looks like a pretty nice home. I mean, I can only see the top view of it, uh, but you know, it does look like a pretty nice home and it looks like it sold for 37000 So, uh, you know, there's always good opportunities taking place uh, in these tax deed auctions. And so those are all available to you. You can see the, the uh, Florida auctions. Here's the Michigan auctions that are going to be coming up, New York auctions. Uh, so if there's a tax deed auction available, you can, you can find the information here. Uh, also, the over-the-counter database. Uh, here's tax lien list, tax deed list, redemption deed list, and then also the secondary market tax liens as well. And so you can go ahead and click on, if we click on tax lien, uh, we can see all of the different states where there's tax and certificates. We can click on Alabama, and you know we have the info or the forms. We click on the list, and here are the different uh, tax tax lists. So we can you know click on Marion and download the Marion list if we wanted. Uh, and so, you know, this is all available to you guys. Uh, and so really there's just, a, you know, a lot of tools that are available to you. Uh, tax deeds, here are the different tax deed states. Click on Florida and there's the tax deeds. We don't have a limit on how many lists you can download. Uh, you know, as far as, you know, there's a lot of companies that do that and, and we're making this just available to you. So, um, a lot of good opportunity there. Uh, and here are the profiles. Now this is going to be uh, uh, another good tool for you. Uh, here you can see here the state profiles uh, listed. We have them listed right along the side in alphabetical order. Uh, you can click on any of them, Alabama, and it's going to pull up the profile. So you can go through and re review and read about uh, you know, the auction dates, the helpful temps, the foreclosure information, over-the-counter information, bidding types, just a lot of good information. Uh, really, you know, one of the most up-to-date profiles, or, or at least the most uh, information as far as profiles that are available. Also, you're going to have access uh, to the, uh, the profile overviews uh, and the individ individual investor profiles. And go back to the profiles. And we can see this down here, the investor profiles, uh, the investor profile overview, the prof profile one, profile two. And this is probably going to actually change up a little bit as well because I'm going to be updating it uh, with different types. We'll probably take out the pre-tax uh, sell investor, add uh, secondary market investor because that's something that's just changed over the last couple of years. Uh, but this is going to be at least be a good step in, in figuring out what type of investment you want to get started with. So investor profile number one, ta tax lien auction investor overview, 
uh, the benefits, the drawbacks, the resources. We're also going to have a commitment rating uh, of how much time it's going to take, uh, how much money, uh, you know, travel, uh, risk, uh, duration. Uh, and so it's going to give you a good idea of, okay, this, ta this investment takes a little bit, you know, takes a little less money. Uh, you know, has maybe a higher commitment in, as far as travel. Uh, you know, risk is low. Uh, and so also from there, you're going to have a list where you can invest using that strategy. And so I'm going to be adding the secondary market profile as well here uh, where uh, you can use uh, and you can purchase secondary market tax liens. That's another, another form of, of tax lien investing. Uh, and then, you can, then, of course, you can review the profiles. So as you uh, review each one of these profiles and you decide, well, I'm going to be, a, a, you know, investor profile number three, an over-the-counter tax lien investor, uh, and, you know, you're going to review how you do that. Uh, you're going to see the states that are available. You're going to go onto the website uh, just right back here and look at over-the-counter list, and uh, you're going to get started. Uh, and so, you know, what I've tried to do is we've tried to put tools together to help you be successful. Now, all of you guys are going to have a 30-day guest pass here on the website uh, to participate in the training, to download the list, to review the profiles. And if you'd like to do in the future, there's just a small monthly fee. Uh, and so uh, this is all available to you. Be sure to use it. And also, you know, be sure to ask questions. You know, we, we'd love to get questions. If we get enough questions, we'll put together a video and send that out with the different questions that you guys have. So we've, let's see what time we've got. We're, we're getting low on time. Let's go ahead and look at a few things real quick. Let's first go ahead and go to NACO.org. I want you guys to to know how to find county websites. So the first thing we're going to do, once we go to NACO.org, uh, and this is the National Association of Counties, we're going to go ahead and click on About County, and that first tab says Find a County. We're going to go ahead and click on Find a County. That's going to pull up a map of the United States. So from here, we can go ahead and click on any of these individual states uh, to be directed to their county, uh, their county website. So we're going to go ahead and click on Florida. Uh, Florida has 67 counties. Uh, we can see all of the counties listed here. And if we were to go ahead and click on the county website, it's going to give us some additional information. So it's going to give us the, the address. Uh, we're going to have the county website right there. We're also going to have the county seat. Uh, but we're also going to see how many square miles it is and the population as of 2010, uh, 2000, 1990, and 1980. So we can look back over the last uh, 30 years and see, you know, how has this area grown in size? We can see in, in Achalua, uh, it went from 146 to 181 to 217 to 247. So it's gone up uh, every single time. So at least we know that this area is growing. Uh, we can go, and we can also get an idea of how big it is. From there, we can go ahead and click on the county website. Okay. So once we go to the county website, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look for uh, two different departments. Now, uh, Florida is a little bit different, so usually we just go find the, the tax collector uh, and the uh, property appraiser to look, research the property records to the tax collector to find the tax lien list. But uh, Florida also has tax deed auctions, and that's going to be handled by the clerk of court. So if we were to go ahead and look here on county uh, services or county offices, we can see the clerk of court right here. Uh, we can go ahead and see the property appraiser's office right there, and we have the tax collector's office right there. Uh, so we have all the information right here at our fingertips that we can click on to find more about the tax sale or review property. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on the clerk of court because we're going to look at the tax deed auction. It's going to go ahead and take us to the clerk of court webpage, uh, and uh, here are some of his services or some of the things that he does and right here we can see tax deed sell so we're going to of course go ahead and click on that once we click on that we're going to have two options here we have scheduled sales and we have the lands available for taxes uh, so the lands available for taxes are actually the over-the-counter tax deeds uh, these are 
properties that are available directly from the from the county by paying off these back taxes. Let's go ahead and go back and we're going to go ahead and click on scheduled sales. So we click on scheduled sales, we can see the information here, uh, $200 deposit or 5% of the bid, whichever is greater, uh, 10 a.m., we can see right there. Uh, so, and, and then the course is gonna be done there at the county courthouse. Below that, we're gonna have a list. Uh, and this is a, a form of online list where you're gonna have the link that's available to click on the parcel number. So we see this property is going up for auction June 11th, so just a couple of days. Um, we can see that it was a, the certificate number uh, that, that did the foreclosure, started the foreclosure, was issued in 2012. Uh, and then we can see that this property is a non-homestead property with an opening bid of 4,936. So if we go ahead and click on that parcel number, we're going to pull up the property information. Uh, we can see the address right there. Uh, we can see uh, the taxpayer. We can see that this property is a condominium. If we, so we continue to scroll down, we can see it's built in 1986, uh, two bedroom, two bath, uh, just over a, a thousand square feet, so you know, 1070. We can see it's got a deck on the property. Down here below, we can also see uh, that the, in 1996, the property sold for 45,600 and it sold in 1984 for 45,500. Uh, they were all sold by warranty deed. So, you know, really we're looking at overall what appears to be uh, a pretty good little property. Now let's go ahead and take that parcel number and let's get a better idea of the parcel number, the address. And probably within this area here, let's go ahead and Woodside Villa, Gainesville. So it's probably one of these condos right here within this area. Take a little bit more to look at the property record. I'm having a hard time pulling up that unit number. Uh, I'm sure we could do it if we spend a little bit more time, but let's look at one more property before we go back. Uh, so here's another property, 8,000. If we click on that parcel number, uh, here's an address right there. We can see here's a $56,000 building. Uh, here's another two bedroom, two bath condo. See it sold in 2010 for 70, uh, 79,400, built in 1996. So let's go ahead and use that uh, address and we're gonna Search it on Google Earth just to get an idea. See that's here within this unit right here. Let's go ahead and take the address and let's search it on a site like Zillow really quickly. So 
So we get a little bit better information on it. Uh, we can see it's in within this complex right here. Uh, estimated about 73,000. Built in 1996. So same, some of the same information. We can also see some of these units that have sold. 82,000, 71,000, 80,000. Uh, so there's properties within this area that have sold. So, uh, you know, with an $8,000 opening bid, it may, it may be a, a pretty good investment. Uh, we'll take a little bit more research into it. But there's uh, just a lot of opportunities, guys. Uh, you know, with, with tax deeds, you're looking to acquire property. With taxing certificates, you're looking to earn a high interest rate return. And also one thing I want to quickly talk about before we go this evening is the secondary marketplace. Uh, this is really a pretty cool thing uh, for a certain type of investor. Uh, you know, we have a lot of investors out there that don't have a ton of time to spend researching tax and certificates. Uh, maybe they have something like a, a, a retirement account uh, that they're not using or, or it's, you know, uh, may not be using, but it's not generating a high, a high return for them. Uh, some old retirement account, old 401k, uh, or money that's maybe in savings you're not earning any interest on. Uh, one thing you can do is you can invest in the secondary market. And what we were able to do is we were able to team up with one of my good friends, uh, uh, been a friend in the in the in the tax sale investing training industry, uh, and as an investor for for probably seven or eight years, uh, we were able to uh, purchase tax and certificates uh, in in the secondary market. And so what happens, there's certain areas in the country that will only sell taxing certificates to uh, to large investors, uh, to really banks or hedge funds. And, and there's lots of these hedge funds that will go and compete in different markets. And for example, in, in Connecticut, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's only, there's cities that will only sell all of their tax liens to one investor. Um, in New York, uh, the, you know, in, in different areas throughout the East, uh, there's lots of these different types of, of, of banks out there. Wells Fargo, the biggest banks that, that you've heard of, invest in tax and certificates and invest, invest in tax and certificates for, uh, you know, for, for 50 years because it earns them a high interest rate return. Uh, you know, they lend money to you and then when they get that money back, they go invest that into tax and certificates. Uh, and so what we were able to do is we were able to establish relationships with some of these large banks, and we were able to purchase uh, some portfolios of some of the best tax and certificates uh, through the bank. And so these banks own these tax liens because they invest into them to earn the interest rate return, and uh, they don't want to foreclose on tax liens. Uh, you know, what they're primarily looking to do is to earn the interest rate return. And so we were able to purchase foreclosure-ready tax liens uh, that investors could purchase and and start that foreclosure process at any time. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to start immediately. Uh, you know, these, these tax liens are going to have a life of lien where you have five, six, seven years before you have to do anything. But they also have the ability to start that foreclosure process or start collecting on that tax lien uh, within a short period of time. Uh, and so the secondary market is really a pretty good uh, um, place to, to purchase tax liens if, if you are not looking to spend a ton of time trying to compete at the auctions, if you're looking for a high interest rate return. In addition to that, you're going to have a servicer uh, and to help through us uh, as far as going through the foreclosure process, uh, you know, Sorry about that. Uh, so this is really the kind of the process these these large banks and hedge funds will purchase these large blocks, and we were able to purchase them from them. Uh, and so, if you're interested in, in investing in these in these secondary market tax liens, what we're able to actually do is uh, I give you a call, we find out how much you'd like to invest, and then I go through and I review our portfolio of secondary tax liens. Uh, you know, I go through, I, I look for tax liens that fit your investment objective. I put together a portfolio. I send it out to you, and we go ahead and review those tax liens. Uh, and so, you know, we've had a lot of investors over the years, you know, where maybe they just couldn't figure it out. They have money that they wanted to invest, or they're, they're you know, they're not earning good interest rate return. And, you know, unless they wanted to, to, uh, you know, try to do coaching where we could help them, you know, step by step through the process, 
you know, there really wasn't an option for them, uh, you know, especially if, if you don't have a ton of time or you have a large amount of money. Uh, that's one thing as well. I mean, uh, if somebody has $100,000 to invest, well, you're going to have to research a lot of tax liens and bid on a lot of tax liens at auction because some of them you may be bidding against other investors. Uh, with these secondary market liens, you know, you're looking at the interest rate uh, that was like an over-the-counter situation. Uh, so if it was an 18% interest rate, you're making 18%. If it's 16%, you're making 16% off that tax lien amount. Uh, and so it's really a pretty good thing for those type of investors. Uh, if you'd like to, to have me create a portfolio for you, uh, just go ahead and fill out your information here. I'll give you a call and, and we can and we can put something together for you. Uh, if not, uh, go ahead and sign up for next week's webinar. Uh, also, we have the webinar tomorrow night that you can participate in uh, where we'll uh, get into some more aspects of, of investing in tax and certificates, starting that due diligence process, uh, going through some of those things that we talked about earlier uh, this evening. So, you know, I really want to appreciate uh, and thank you guys for attending the webinar this evening. Is this, if this is the first webinar you attended, I'll go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and set you up with a username and password for the website and I'll email it out to you. Uh, your, 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 um, Username is your email address and your password usually is going to be taxlien, T-A-X-L-I-E-N, all one word. Uh, and you can go ahead and type in your, your email address and your password if you've, if you've already received the email from me. Uh, if this is the first day you've attended the webinar, then we'll go ahead and set you up with an account and send you out the information. And you're going to have access to all the things that we have. And we're just going to continue building this again. Uh, you know, we did this for... for uh, for over 10 years uh, and uh, just kind of uh, reamping the website and, and, and making it fresh and new again. Uh, and so, you know, we, we want to thank you for, for, for uh, signing up. Uh, go ahead and use the resources. Uh, you're going to find as, as you go through that these resources are going to be available to you and they're going to be helpful in helping you get started with taxing and deed investing. Uh, you know, really, I think we have some, some pretty good information here. We have uh, live training. We have lists available for you. We have over-the-counter lists. We have uh, state profiles on how to invest, uh, what areas to invest into to, based on your resources and objectives. And we have some of the best secondary market liens available. Uh, and, uh, you know, all you needed to do was register for the website and, and we were able to, to, to help you help you get started over the next 30 days. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to uh, email us and also, you know, hopefully we'll have you on tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to get into some more due diligence, kind of uh, take off from where we left in the webinar this evening and get into some more due diligence and go through uh, some of those things that we talked about. So again, thank you for being on the line. I appreciate you being here. Uh, for if any of you guys are into NBA basketball, hopefully you can catch the last couple of minutes. Uh, I've got mine on DVR, so I'm going to go home and watch a little bit of uh, basketball. And uh, again, thank you for being on the line. Look forward to talking to you. Hopefully we'll talk to you tomorrow night. Thank you and good night.